Hello and welcome to the program Connect with Enoch. This is where I connect with political leaders, opinion leaders, and more. And today we are blessed to have a very special guest, a man I call a man of many parts, a leading member of the Progressive Alliance of Ghana, PAG. He is a renowned speaker who has made impact in the lives of many across the world, especially the youth. Let me give you a short profile of this very man. I'm not going to mention his name for status. He is a well-known author, speaker, and a leading member of the Progressive Alliance for Ghana, PAG PAG. He holds a BSc degree in zoology with Botany, University of Ghana, and DPhil in medical biology. That is, um, uh, how do you call it, University of Success, UK. I like that name because of how it is spelled. This very great man is the founder and apostle of City of God Church and the City Churches, as well as the director of the award-winning New Nation School. He is also the chairman of the City Credit Union. The city spelled C I W T I, City Credit Union. He is married to Mrs. Alessandra PP, and together they are blessed with five beautiful children. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome you to the man and the one and only, Dr. John Peepy. How are you, sir? I'm doing very good, thank you. Ordinarily, um, this show is supposed to be done in the local Akan language, but there's another local language called the Voltaren language, the Ewa language. I'm not very good at it, but I'm gonna ask him some few questions for him to help me make it very easy. So I'm gonna start learning the language right away because equally he cannot uh, say it much more in the Akan language. So we have to do it in English. But how do we say uh, money? I love the topic of money. How do you say money in the Volterian language? Ega. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Ega. Ega. Ah, you know, yeah. that is power, isn't it? it yeah. sounds... <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. like that. For us, we say Sika. That's yeah, right. You know, uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. And how do you say beautiful in in in? Uh, Enya ponto. Okay, that one we we'll continue on, and uh, when we, we we are done, nice one, nice one. Welcome, welcome, Doctor John P. P. Thank you. They're doing very well. Thank you. Yes. Welcome to Enough Connect. I think uh, four of our daughters have married and left home, so we've got only one son with us now. Oh, but well done. Well. Well done, well done, well done. We are <laughs> privileged to have you in Ghana and with us. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, let's go into action. He's a man of action, so we're not going to waste much more time. Like I say, he's a leading member of the Progressive Alliance of Ghana, PAG. Recently was inaugurated in Cape Coast. He's a leading member of that very party. Now, Doc, um, PAG will be coming you know, against major parties um, NPP, NDC, and over the period, these two have been at the forefront. One, there are some factors that many a time people consider. One of them being um, that they are very popular, they are politically experienced and connected, they have the resources and the links, and traditionally and historically, no other party or leader has been able to defeat these two. So how would the PAG party be able to do you know, this magic by defeating the NPP, NDC? Uh, well, uh, Enoch, I wanted to, I would like to answer that in two ways. First of all, I really believe that there is a new wind of change blowing across this country. Mm. This country has never felt like this ever before, where so many people you meet and talk to them about the political future of this country, the economic future of this country, will tell you quite simply that they are tired of going to vote again and again for these two major parties. They'll say to you, they will not be voting at all in the forthcoming election because they think both major parties are the same. Mm. And they are just like doing musical chairs with us. <laughs> and so there's frustration in the nation. Mm -hmm. There's a new wind blowing, which is saying, come on, we want something fresh. Come mm. on, we want something new. And I would say that PAG is sort of responding to this cries of the people. So that's the first thing I would say, mm -hmm. that uh, we got a, it's a season of change. Mm. Secondly, I would also want to mention that uh, 
PAG, we are doing a lot of work uh, on the ground, uh, which we cannot easily disclose, but there is a lot of work to touch the grassroots of this country, where without all the publicity, not even in the open, and there are tools for doing which we believe is going to give us considerable advantage uh, in this forthcoming elections. We'll be using innovative methods as well. Mm. Uh, will become obvious in the next month or two. So what you're saying basically is that you are coming up with new tools of strategy to win this election against the NPC. That's, that's right. Which is very different from the traditional system we know. Yes. Mm, interesting. Let's um, continue with the discussion. Um, people still many a time conclude that um, instead of joining the NPP NDC to make things very easy, when you decide to go solo by forming another political party, it becomes a waste of time, waste of resources, and so on and so forth. When you hear people talk like that, how do you PAG um, people see it, or how do you, I mean, accept it? I, I really think, you know, that uh, a careful observation of the political history of this country, the last, particularly the last 32 years, which is what they, in the span of the Fourth Republic, will reveal that there's a pattern where uh, every between the two parties, as they switch from one to the other, uh, we see the same things, the same wrong things being done, uh, the same problems coming up again the nation without solution. And we, we believe that uh, it is due to the way they actually get into office. And so by the time they get into office, they are already compromised. Hmm. So let me give you an example. Uh, the amount of money that hmm. they have to spend uh -huh. on their primaries alone runs into millions of dollars. Uh -huh. And then, of course, the amount of money they have to spend on their company obviously goes even into, is ballooning through the uh -huh. ceiling. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So, and these monies, they don't come from the air. They <laughs> come from people who uh, either they borrow it or they are given by people who are expecting some returns when they come to office. So by the time a leader is uh, outdoored in January of the, of the particular year, mm. the man is encumbered with huge financial obligations, financial debt, I'll put it that way. Mm. Now, what happens then is that, and where would he get it from? Where would he get the money from to pay all these debts? You know, mm. that is where the corruption and the bribery and everything starts from. Mm -hmm. Money allocated to develop this nation cannot be put in those places. They have to be retrieved to sort out these immediate problems we are, which are weighing these particular leaders down before they start. And so the process of coming into power, uh, inherent in that process, is the corruption that we are all seeing and talking about and shouting about. Mm -hmm. So the way, by the time, so what I'm saying is this, uh, these two major parties are already compromised by the time they arrive <laughs> on the place where they're going to lead this nation. And so we, we really want to say that this, uh, we must not, uh, we, we, it, 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 it's, it's just going to be like that if we let that continue. So if we want to see something different, we must go through the whole process differently. And that is why we are trying to be innovative in how we work our way through eventually taking hold of power in this nation and so it is it is a real this this the parties the way they operate uh, already ties them up and binds them up they cannot really be free to even serve they're not thinking of serving anybody they cannot be free to think of serving anybody in this country they have to look after themselves and solve their own problems and that could take the whole term that is why we are seeing this repeated failures of government again and again where citizens needs are not being addressed prosperity is not being spread out this is where it's coming from so we need a new way of coming into power as well so the new way of coming to power is where the PAG comes in where probably we start asking the question when people many a time say that you are wasting resources and money and so on and so forth you have to diffuse that from the minds of those people um, I still want to be convinced from that angle that 
why would I have to vote for PAG if I vote for them and I'm not going to see them come to power? Why wouldn't I still move with the flow? That is where I really want to get the whole um, picture. Yeah, I, I want to start by saying uh, a famous quote often attributed to uh, Einstein. I'm not sure that it's him, but I think everybody says the same so far. Okay. Let's check. He said, uh, you can't continue to do the same things mm. the same way mm. and expect a different result. In yeah. fact, he goes as far as saying it's, it's insanity to do the same things the same way and expect a different result. Mm. So, uh, so far, we have always been voting for these two parties because we think, okay, they are big. They are the only parties that are going to win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and that you think you're going to be wasting votes on any other party. Can I put it this way, loud and clear? Mm. The real wastage of votes mm -hmm. is when we put it for these two major parties. Okay. Because they had these two, they had this country between them for 32 years, 16 wow. years at least. Mm. And here we, you know, Ghana is completely, almost a failed state now, economically. We are drowning in debt. Inflation is soaring. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we've got a situation where uh, the poverty is spreading at an alarming level in this nation. Uh, 32 years of us voting for this way, in this way, for these two major parties, this is where it has brought us to. And now, people are saying that point. we are used to the system of poverty. <laughs> yeah. so at this point, yes, you know, we need to ask the question, isn't it time to do something different? Mm. I believe it is time to think differently, mm. to do things differently, mm. so that we can get a different result. And I really believe that we should look at the motives of uh, parties like uh, a party like PAG. Mm. The motive is really for the welfare and the well-being of the citizens of this country. Mm. Uh, they, there's no other motive beyond that. Uh, to take Ghana and bring Ghana into, to create a brand Ghana, which begins to punch at a much different level in the among nations, to restore the glory that we've lost in this nation, to bring back the respect and the honor that this country has had. And I, 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 I would, we believe that we were much, we will, we will be able to do this, do something completely different in this country. And so, yes, I really say, and I want to appeal to voters to stop in their tracks and think, mm. surely it's time to do something different, to vote differently. And I said they should now vote for PAG and see what will happen in this nation. So basically, it's, um, in your own words, it's a waste to vote for MPP and DC. Exactly. Okay. Let's now come to this very um, topic uh, where my interests lie most, and I know that your interest is there as well, the Constitution, because that is the holy book of our country. Um, it gives some strange powers, or let's say special powers, that yes. makes the president um, a superhuman, a demigod, <laughs> or whatever thing that you want to you know, call him, where the president at the end appoints the IGP, the CDS, the ECSC, and all the Cs. In, you know, the future, let's say, government of PAG, what are you going to do with these powers? Well, the issue of the Constitution has engaged many minds in our nation for decades now. Mm. It's even been a time where a Constitutional Review Committee was put up. They've come up with very, very good suggestions, but they were never implemented because of the uh, because the governments in power, particularly, again, these two major governments, they were not courageous enough uh, to be able to implement these changes. That will actually, interestingly, reduce the, some of the powers that have been uh, given uh, to the uh, leaders of the nation. So I think that we will come with uh, an open mind. We will come, you know, moved by our desire to provide the best for our citizens, we will look at those uh, constitutional uh, recommendations for revising the constitution, those that are good and will actually enhance life in this nation, we will be courageous and fair to implement them, uh, even if it looks like it is cutting back on the powers that we may have. If it will benefit the people, which is our goal, we will do so. 
we are also aware that some of the powers that are entrusted the president alone is just excessive. Mm. Those we will be courageous enough again uh, to change them to reflect the uh, the heart and mind of uh, the broad general broad generality of Ghanaians. Because so many people have been speaking about this, mm. we we will be willing and uh, to implement any changes that are necessary. Wow, wow. So what you're going to do is consultation with the people before you touch the constitution on these powers? I think a lot of that has been done already, Enoch, and we got a uh, report. But of course, we can open that up again mm. and be sure that uh, what has been put down still reflects the mind and the desires of the current population mm. and we will implement the best thing, always the best thing for Ghana. All right, still on the Constitution. Um, there are those who believe that um, the current presidential system, still on this very topic, where it empowers the president to be a superhuman and a demigod and have all those powers uh, to be Captain Planet or whatever. Yes. Um, this system, we should change it to the parliamentary system, where probably the prime minister will be the leader in government, while the president will be the head of state in charge of the state asset as was practiced during the monarchy system when Nkrumah um, became a prime minister in 1957 thereabout and also Buzo became a prime minister from 1969 to 72 thereabout. Um, what do you say or what, do you, uh, what is your opinion on this matter? Or what is PAG stance on this? I, I don't think we need, we need to do the drastic switch back to the uh, parliamentary uh, system. I think that what we have now it can be modified, it can be transformed. If you've got the intention and the right motives, it can be transformed to serve Ghana to a much better extent than it is doing now. Uh, I, I feel we can, we can keep to this and make it work for us. Yes. And we must also mention that uh, the Constitution, uh, of course, you know, we, a lot has been said about it, but it is those who uh, administer it, those who work within it, the leaders, the character of the people is as critical as the constitution itself. You can deliver an angelic constitution, which is all perfect in every way, but you put a wrong person there, you will never get the results you expect. So we, are, we will be eager to have everything done with the constitution changes, and we will also promise and pledge that because of our motivation, our desire uh, to transform this nation for the benefit of Ghanaians, the outworking of the constitution will benefit from the character that we bring to it. Mm, that's interesting. If you just join us, I'm having one on one with Dr. John PP, author, speaker, and a leading member of PAG, or Progressive Alliance of Ghana. He's making very, very interesting point. Doc. Let's come to PAG's um, policy um, on your flagship yeah. program. As you know, the yeah. NDC, they are looking at 24-hour economy and the NPP digitization. The last time we spoke to your interim chairman, Professor Ozen, who said he believes these are all slogans. I don't know what your opinion is and the PAG stands on this one as well. What is the main um, flagship program of PAG? Okay. I, I want to say that first and foremost before i get into the details that we need to reimagine ghana as a nation uh at the moment uh where ghana is and what people expect to happen in this country is really really low level and so we need to start by reimagining ghana first of all a country where the at the heart of leadership will be integrity truthfulness now that people often take it as a little thing but i think is the biggest thing of all PAG will be pledging to have uh, uh PAG will be pledging and aiming for a nation where integrity and truthfulness is at the core of the heart of the leadership now what this means is that our a will be a our b will be b and that level of uh, integrity is important 
And if we set the example, we believe that it will then filter and influence everything else, every government department that is working connected with us. This is so important because, uh, you know, I need to say this, mm -hmm. we have many exciting projects and many important ideas I'll be sharing in a moment. Mm. But if we don't have this in place, mm. all the projects will flounder and fail mm. at the same as you have seen this happen again and again. Mm -hmm. So we will we'll be pledging uh, that this will be a, a touchstone of our, uh, of our leadership. And I, one of the things that I believe we ought to do mm. is take a strong uh, leaf from uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's life where he uh, just decided that as a leader of this country, mm -hmm. he's not going to acquire any property for himself. Mm. And he didn't. Mm. And this is all. Now, I believe that the PhD leadership, uh, PhD government, the, the, the cabinet, and everybody working closely with government, we will make a pledge that during our term of office, mm. we will not acquire any property for ourselves. And we shall just say that. Now, it may sound extreme, but I think that we have gone so far to the other side where government is a means by which people uh, gather uh, wealth and uh, you know fair and foul means so much so that we need to swing to the far other side where we say no anybody who coming in you must sign a pledge no property neither will you try and get it through any of your relatives either mm. so we put that there and we will find ways of making that happen. There will be declaration of assets at the beginning, declaration of assets at the end of every term. We will, we, will, we will go for this. And so that will be the setting. Now, when we create that clean environment, mm. we believe that the door will be open for us to implement some fantastic programs for this country. And I see uh, the potential, I will call it, we need a, a five simultaneous revolutions let me say peaceful revolution mm. in this country going on at the same time. I was going to tell you revolution. A lot of things coming to mind. <laughs> yes. Peaceful mm. revolutions in this country. Mm. I think the first one should be an agricultural revolution uh, where we aim to produce all the food that we, we But be, we Before eat. you continue, um, yes. I asked, um, if given a very beautiful explanation though, but I w just want to know your main flagship program that... I can say that, okay, PAG, we are linked to agriculture, sport, or creative arts industry, or health, or something like that. What is the main flagship program, PAG? Well, I think that if, if you ask for the main thing, uh, the way this country is now, mm. uh, no one main thing is going to take us out of it. So we actually need to tackle five, uh, this is what I'm trying to bring to you. Okay. We need to we need to tackle uh, five uh, areas simultaneously, all designed to release prosperity for all Ghanaians and provide equal opportunities for all Ghanaians in this country. Mm. We'll be aiming to make sure that prosperity is shared across this country for all, equal opportunities for development for all mm. but it's important that these things are we, i want to give a context to that that's what i'm trying to do it got to be we it will just be a pie in the sky unless we tackle five we, we go for five peaceful revolutions which okay. i would like to speak about all right let's go with them give me yes. some of these um areas yes. mm -hmm. first, and for, first, first and foremost there has to be an agricultural revolution where mm. through development of uh, uh, innovative and modern cooperatives, we get uh, towns and villages created in the food growing areas. Government uh, provides the facilities uh, and then people are selected mm. to now go and make their life in these new towns and villages that we create. Mm. Now, the key thing about that is the sector minister will be required to go and live on one of these in one of these places as well. Okay, we okay, okay. That live, uh, you will no longer be doing everything from Accra. Mm. Mm. 
of it, we have to go and live with this, the, the main project, and make sure that it actually happens. He has to experience the life that the people living there are experiencing. Then he will be more responsive to any needs and changes mm -hmm. that are. But uh, you say charity uh, many a time begins at home. Yes. Um, you being a lady member who is um, also discussing this and sharing this information about agriculture, being yeah. part of your flagship program. You yourself, are you into farming? Do you have any agriculture background? Are you into something like that? I do. Okay. I have, I'm, I'm, as I'm talking to you, I've got a 5,000 uh, mound yam farm in northern Ghana. Wow. Uh, uh, down here near my home as well, I've got some yams that I grow. Mm. Um, that get used to it. oh yeah so i've got farms like that and i've also uh, uh helped uh local people in the area to uh, set up similar size farms for themselves uh and uh and even a, a maize farm also a, a 15 wow. acre maize we helped that so i am really into it mm. i love it so i myself i i've got my farms and i go and i go and work on it I go and visit the farm, you know, quite every week. Yeah. I see. And I understand why agriculture indeed is a revolution for, for you and the PAG. Continue, please. Yeah. So the next revolution will be an industrial revolution where Ghana, we are going to aim to make virtually everything that we need to use in this country. And it's possible. I will envision this nation, our young people, uh, to become innovative, uh, to become creative, and we will find ways of producing uh, our own clothes, large scales, shoes, things that we need, furniture. Uh, I'll envision this nation, our roads. Our, look, we'll, we'll produce, we'll produce uh, our, all our refrigerators, all our air conditioners, mm. all our cars, I will take it even beyond that. We will aim to produce aeroplanes in this country. Really? So, will be oh yeah, oh yeah, because the, the, you know the production of all these things, the blueprints are all there. It's just so it's like you are adopting the Enkroma Echampon kind of ten, which is Echampon believed in made in Ghana stuff. Enkroma Ekola also believed in made in Ghana stuff. And I remember in the champion days, we were assembling um, cars in Ghana. So, I, I, yeah, that is what I'm asking. Is and, that the and, kind of thing that you are looking at, just like in Chroma also did um, yeah. in his days? We have the potential, and our people are so creative. It's just that leadership has never released that potential. But we bring a leadership that will open the doors for us, our people in this country, to begin to run. In the whole industrial sector, okay. then to begin to fly in the whole industrial sector, mm. I will let a mega-sized companies built that will begin to compete with even other international mm. companies. Obviously, we have to think of the West African environment, mm. the African mm. environment. Mm. Mm. Industrially, mm. we will become an industrial power in this country, in the in the, in the region. So, you've just now, giving me um, two very. Um, important areas that are agriculture industrialization which one yes. would you say and fit because of time yes. the, mm -hmm. the, the 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 third one there will be a natural resource revolution okay and what i mean by that is enoch at the moment ghana that is we are endowed with so much wealth inside our ground mm -hmm. gold silver bauxite for aluminium oil just name it mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. all the but the proportion of returns, that proportion, proportion of wealth that we get from these uh, uh, minerals, extractive uh, things, is very, very tiny. It's appalling. Mm. And so that, in fact, uh, I wouldn't say much, but I think that the arrangements that were made to hand over these uh, wealth of our nation to foreigners and sometimes their Ghanaian cronies in this country <laughs> we will need to uh, change that okay so most of the wealth benefits the 34 million Ghanaians in this country okay now if we take hold of that it will be uh, so that 
suddenly we have lots of money in our hands, lots of wealth in our hands to be able to put into all other things that we needed to do. We would not need to go borrowing, honestly. Mm. If we if we make this, we would not need to go borrowing uh, as we are doing, as we have been doing all the time. So natural resource revolution, there has to be, you have to turn the tables there. Mm. Ghana become the main owners and we can we can employ people to bring the expertise to help us take it out or we can buy the equipment, take it out, but Ghana has to be firmly in charge of our, its natural resources. resources. Yes. Let's look at the fourth and the fifth in, in brief. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the fourth will be the infrastructure revolution. Mm. Uh, because what I'm talking to you about agriculture, about industrialization, in, uh, about, industrialization. about uh, natural resources, mm. we need to be connected with roads, we need to be connected with railways, we need to be connected with uh, 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 flights within the country. So roads, uh, and supplies uh listen we need to i mean it's appalling what we have now roads are such in a bad state mm. but roads open up a country railways open up a country uh and so we would have a revolution there where we transform the uh, networks of these things that link up this country uh and our energy resources and all that are going to be very very important key mm. uh who connect with all this. And then the fifth uh, peaceful revolution is going to be the ethical revolution that I alluded to mm. at the beginning. Because where we stand now, it will be true to say that anybody who wants to do the right thing in this country gets punished. And anybody who is doing the wrong thing, however, will succeed and flourish. What do I mean by that? Mm. Uh, Contracts are awarded not on merit, okay. but they are awarded on how much you can pay bribe-wise mm -hmm. to the government officials in charge of it. Now, because of this, anybody who doesn't want to pay any bribes, he doesn't get any contracts yes. to do in this country. And so what I'm saying is that uh, integrity is a punishable offense in this country now. Okay. Everywhere we turn okay. this country. And sometimes even getting your children into schools. Mm. If you want to play for integrity, you are punished. You can't get them into it. Mm. Uh, so, but when we come in, we will, we will change the culture. Wow. Where integrity will get the thumbs up. Integrity will be the thing that actually uh, uh, receives the approval of government. It will become, uh, it will become the, the way we do business in this country. Mm. And when we set that tone, we believe that uh, uh, from then on, it, it, people will catch on to it. If you live a life that is a life, you, 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 your business, you conduct it truthfully and honestly, you will succeed. Uh, rather than now, where it is actually believed that if you do that, you won't. But if you really do the wrong things, then that's when you succeed. We will change all that. We will, we will uh, pledge uh, ourselves to set the tone so that uh, Ghanaians will rise up. Because in every Ghanaian, there's a desire to mm. do the right thing, no matter mm. how little. Mm. But it is the system, it is the culture of leadership that actually uh, destroys that and opens the door to all the wrong things. We will try and reset that. I see. But So it means that this faith policy is about tackling corruption, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And the uh, general opinion that corruption is something that um, can be minimized but cannot be taken away from the equation. Where do we stand on that, PAG? Well, I think that will be aiming too low. I will okay. feel that would be okay. Okay. Uh, aiming mm. too low. I mm. think we would need to aim for the highest okay. possible okay. life in this nation. And particularly for leadership, because leadership is, is a sacred duty. And uh, that sacred duty is a sacred pledge to lead people, to take charge of resources of a nation and, and make, sure, make, sure, make sure that everybody gets it here. We will say that we will aim for a total zero level of uh, corruption. And that's what we'll be going for. Mm. And uh, we, would, we will set up systems to allow us to get to that and we would also be very quick to punish uh, anyone who 
uh, that's the thing wrong and it will be done publicly to serve as a deterrent for anybody else who does it so you see the thing is that uh uh we will not know about Ghanaians are tired mm. of this constant scandals that keep coming out of this mm -hmm. place called mm -hmm. leadership mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean before you get through this one the next one is even bigger, bigger. <laughs> more, more and more shocking and before you slowly manage you know man you know maneuver your way through it, another one comes mm. i mean it's a disgrace for our nation it has mm. reduced brand ghana to almost like uh, the lowest level among nations Mm. It's the shape people do. Ghanaians can no longer hold their heads high as they used to be uh, in the early years of our nationhood. We go somewhere, we have to keep our heads down because of all the stuff that people know about us now. We will aim to change that and slowly begin to restore the dignity and value and worth okay. of our people in this nation. All right. So, Sharon White with Dr. John P.P., a leading member of PAG, a renowned speaker as well. Um, it's interesting. I was hoping to hear one million, one down, <laughs> <laughs> and one no. woman per every constituency. <laughs> anyway, no. um, let's connect with it. Okay, let's continue. Let's go international a little bit and look at Kenya, our own yeah. um, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Recently, the youth, you know, rose against the House of Law because of taxes. And I will add this to the cost of living in Ghana as well, where people seem to complain about taxes, especially on import duties and so on and so forth. But let's uh, look at the Kenyan situation. Is that a statement to Ghanaians, to Africa, or is just a warning or is something that we should be concerned about that it can happen any day, any time? And um, lastly, let's look at the taxes as well, how PAG intends to fix this. Yeah, I, I believe that the Kenyan situation is a loud warning and a loud cry that a new wind is blowing over the African continent. And we need to realize that our citizens uh, are now waking up and saying enough is enough. Mm. And so if we are wise, in Ghana, we should actually begin to sit up, the present government, sit up and listen to and go and study the anatomy of what happened in Kenya. That is a statement to the leaders of, of this country, that if they are wise yes. enough, they should listen to the voice of the people. Yes. Mm. Yes. And of course, we, we, we coming as a, as a PhD, we've got lots to learn from that as well. But we know that what we are seeking to implement uh, will be very different from the circumstances leading up to the Kenyan situation. I really feel that what's happening in Kenya, uh, it can happen here. Everybody says, Ghanaians, we are very tolerant. We are very tolerant, we are very tolerant, <laughs> it's, which is okay, it's fine. Uh, but I think sometimes it gets to a point where you've had too much. Mm. It's too, and then things can explode, but we don't, we, we don't want it to get to that. So let's begin to make those in power should really begin to make the changes that are necessary to avoid a repetition of what happened in Kenya. Mm, that's beautiful. Let's come to our very own, um, yeah, but before we continue on, on the taxes, how, how do we um, fix that in this country? Because a lot of people you know, complain. There is, yeah, you know, uh, there is a well-known uh, thing about taxes that uh, you can tax your economy to death. And unfortunately, that is what we're doing in Ghana now. Mm. You see, uh, the government made lots of mistakes, which has reduced their sources of income. And, and, and those mistakes cannot be corrected by putting everything on taxes. Okay. No, you cannot do that. Identify some of these mistakes for me. Well, there was no investment in manufacturing, industri industrialization, production of goods and services, very, very little so investment. there was no plan. There was no plan. No, I mean, we haven't seen any growth in industry in this country. The, if you grow your industry, it generates income and it's able to pay you taxes. It's able to do things that bring wealth, not only to the companies, but to the nation as a whole. Now, we never did anything like that. 
On the contrary, we even borrowed money instead of investing in, in, in industries. We, we, we actually ended up uh, either uh, messing up with the money or we don't know where those monies have gone to. And so we've been in a situation where we are short mm, of but money. But I will tell you that it has gone to free SHS and so on and so forth. You should, we, that is, again, we could talk about that another time. I mm. think it's a very, very, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very bad idea to borrow money as a family and use it on eating. <laughs> no, if you start borrowing money to eat every day, you are already a failed family. Mm. There may be occasionally you need to borrow, but the standard thing is you should earn enough to spend mm -hmm. and support your family on food. Yes. Money that is borrowed should never be spent on feeding children. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which means, you know, we should find ways of generating the money ourselves. And I, I have something to say about that uh, mm -hmm. later on. But mm -hmm. that was a very bad plan. We should never do that. We should mm -hmm. never have done So money borrowed, money's borrowed should be invested in industry which generates wealth. Mm -hmm. And out of that, wealth comes back to the, gun, mm -hmm. to the country. But what we've done now, basically, we, we, we haven't created any wealth. And we think that we can create it from taxes. That it never happens. If you push and push like they are pushing, there's so many nuisance taxes. If you go to the ports and other places now, so many, new, so much nuisance taxes that many people are just folding up their businesses. They can't cope with it. And so you can kill an economy with too much taxation. In fact, the best way to release productivity is the opposite. Reduce taxes, people will be happy to invest. We were happy to pay the smaller taxes. And before you knew it, many, many more industries will come up. Many more services will come up. And then the totality of the greater number of industries and businesses will actually provide what you need. Now, we are on the wrong path. And if we don't change now, we will actually kill even the few industries we have in our country. Interesting. So it means that PAG is looking at investing in infrastructure and all those policies that you talked about. And through that, you'll be able to reduce taxes. So that's what you're trying to say. Uh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yes. We'll be ending very soon. But your brother, Dr. Maitiopoku Prempe, known to many as Napo, recently described President Anado as the best there is or the best ever. And even made some statements against Nkrumah. This really angered even some NPP faithfuls because they believe that it was a disrespect to the office of former president Kufu and yes. so and so forth. When he heard it, what was your initial thought? I was, I was astounded because there is absolutely no comparison between the president leadership and the, and the first leader that we had in this country. So I think that, I think it was an unfortunate statement that he made. And what do you uh, think would have made him to say that? In your opinion, you are a political activist. Uh, what, what do you think, and a, a political researcher? What do you think will make a, a nominee who intends to become or who has the potential of becoming a vice president to say such a thing about a man who led Ghana to independence? Yeah, I think it might just be a sickle fancy to his leader, which is mm. quite common. And uh, also, maybe they don't know the history. In fact, many people don't actually know the history. Uh, particularly if, you're, if they have been on the opposite side of uh, uh, the political divide. They, yes, they would. They would have not taken time to look at the history and know exactly what happened within that short period of time. So that was an unfortunate statement, and we hope that nothing like that occurs. But you've got to understand that the this present government has always been trying to rewrite the history, mm. Ghana, mm. Uh, particularly the Nkrumah era. Uh, to make it seem like, you know, they actually, the other side of the divide did everything. And maybe it's just continuing in the same vein, which is rather unfortunate. But the true history will show that, wow, there's actually no comparison there. Interesting. Finally, 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 you are an apostle of God in the kingdom of God. Yes. And interestingly, some charlatans, in quotes, have made religion to be seen as a curse by, I mean, some people. Yes. In an era where people are selling certain stuff and calling it the blood of Jesus, 
the holy this, the holy that, and so on and so forth. And these are products that people consume all the time without approval of FDA. What will the future PH, you know, PAG, you know, do, PAC do to ensure sanity in the kingdom of God? Thank you so much, Enoch. It's a subject that exercises my mind and my heart because we know the truth of what, uh, of who God is, of who Jesus is, and the truth of who he is is such a far cry from the things that you have described. Things that are sometimes done in his name now that makes you feel like, wow, what, what, which of the Bibles are people reading? <laughs> so, unfortunately, but unfortunately, the, we will always have this. Uh, the, I think that uh, our response to this will be to uh, make sure that uh, religious leaders, we encourage them to get together and uh, form associations that allow mutual correction mm. and uh, uh, mutual support. Uh, so you don't get these extremely deviant things happening for even more than a week. As soon as it comes up, their own brothers, their own uh, brothers and sisters will pick them up and say, oh, come on, this is, you're going off course here. We'll be able to speak to one another. We will encourage that level of uh, fostering uh, uh, a real good relationships between all the leaders so that the good name or the powerful name of God and the Lord, of, and the Lord Jesus will shine out continually because it will be like he is the light he will be, bring so much light to all of us that's what he wants to give to this this nation and every other nation it will be a shame that that beautiful light of his is rather covered by the unfortunate things that we just described we will, we will, we will try and help the uh, christian community religious community to make sure that they are able to uh, sort themselves out in this way sort themselves out in this very way yeah. my guest has been the one the one and only dr john pp we've gone you know um on various topics and the next time i believe i'm going to speak the Voltaren language and it's going to be you know on camera as well so that i see i'll look at you you'll also be looking at me and we share more <laughs> words but how do we say food in in, in Voltaren language i know uh, now i know ega isn't it that yes. is for money so yeah. this one Food. No do do. Huh? No do do. No do do. Ah, that's, you see, that's beautiful. So now I have two, you know, languages. You know, and I have two <laughs> words too. Uh, hey, not language. Yes. Sorry, two words. <laughs> yes, two words. So I'm a step ahead of others. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, doc, any final word on behalf of PAG yourself and how people probably can find you or PAG or any friend that you can probably put across for people to follow. Uh, well, uh, any final word will be, it's time to make a change. And change is so necessary. It's time to change the leadership of this nation. It's time for Ghanaians to, that they're going to vote differently. And we urge every Ghanaian listening to me, every Ghanaian who will hear about PAG, I can assure them that they are people with the best motives, best motivations, and they also have the capacity to transform this nation into a bright, happy, and a prosperous state. Uh, uh, we, 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 we can see that already in our mind's eye. We want Ghanaians to give us the, uh, the, the nod so that we can implement uh, these policies. And we want everybody to, you know, uh, go on our website, look for PhD, and then find a way of joining us. Uh, we want everyone who is tired of the system now, everyone who uh, wants to see the right things done, everyone who wants to, is courageous to come and join us. Uh, there are so many positions. We want people to still up to become, to come to, up to uh, compete for parliamentary positions, 
come and join us. We want people who want to uh, support the work, come and join us. Uh, we want the whole middle class of Ghana, the lower lower class, every place, every tribe, every 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 language that is spoken in this country. We want everyone to join. We want the men, women, uh, young people, every category, every demographic. PAG has room for you. Come and join us. Let us start a new thing in this nation for the improvement and prosperity of life in our nation. Thank you very much. So in Volterian language, invite your friends and family to your party. Some very short in Volterian language. No vinya muchuo plenyo no uh chichiao kwede vio kata me let the biacho me asibe uh lay came in or a vote one a MD secret MPP ever ever glow no new recommend to lemma of your you have no more be paid over when I'm Mr. Regina vote original LMB Fifia PAG bear me call a new year the border Pamela Mia talk at town the vote original America Tang one of a way Kakare to Kokatama Miva or the Kaplemi the PAG Ameyo Kebe Yava Tro Anye a Hobe MP Zola Miva join me Ameyo Kebe and Naka Pedal and Move Home Miva join me but me a Tro Gidule to Kosyame the Waklomi Aide Waklomi Aide at Baikenya at Baike Jejina Messiam a Jija Jacopo Play Yahira Blibo now no to Coca Tangela if I join PAG. Beautiful. So in other words, he's saying that come and join PAG. You know, yes. I believe that's the summary. That's... You see, I'm I'm doing well. <laughs> you are <laughs> <laughs> all right. My guest has been the man himself, Dr. John PP, uh, who is a well known author and speaker, and also a leading member of the Progressive Alliance of Ghana PAG. This has been your man, Enoch Eju, and the program Connect with Enoch. Next time, we'll bring you more um, political figures as well as in the political season. Doc, thank you very much for your time on the program, and see you thank soon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Enoch. Bye for that.